little bit earlier. I just kind of want to go cover what I was doing or what I was trying to do. I'm just kind of showing how I work with these terraforms. Um, accidentally muted my mic, I think, or hit my mic hotkey on accident. But the way I'm working with these terraforms, um, I can just kind of jump right in. I'm using these or terraforms. I've actually, unfortunately, some of the stuff I showed in the stream I did earlier, I've already done it. So I moved some of my um, tile sets. I, used, I moved some of my tiles from where they were earlier. The, I had the resources in the same area as I have my other roofs. These are going to be terrain roofs, and I want my resource roofs to be separate. I also want the resource walls separate, so I, I took those out of this wall tile set. And if you ever copy and paste or cut and move one of your tiles, you have to go back through all of your terraform, any tiles that have that tile that you just moved set as a neighboring tile. You have to go back through and reset all of the associated tiles. Um, since I already did it, I don't really have anything here to show you an example of that, but if you were to move a wall tile from one tile set to another, if you have any ground tiles that have terraforms linked to that wall tile, you, you just have to go back through and reset it as your neighboring tile. <coughs> or reset the neighboring tiles for any terraform that uses it, really. So I'll go back to my walls. The way that I've got this set up is my ground tiles most of the time, I just start with a base uh, for these plants, terrestrial or rocky type planets, or I guess habitable or terrestrial habitable planets. The base tile is going to be this grass. I might change things. Uh, I kind of like this grass texture, this appearance, this tile. I might change things further down the line. Same thing with the sand. But I start with a base tile. That doesn't have any terraforms at all. And then move over here to the sand or my dirt. I'm probably going to have sand and dirt, flat dirt and sand, but right now it's just sand. It's got two terraforms here. You can actually change the amount right here, obviously the change amount will let you change it. <coughs> On the downside, the maximum is 15. That's That sounds like a lot until you start working with a whole bunch of different tiles that need terraforms, uh, especially special conditions like ignore or unknown tile sets like this this particular one I'll explain in a minute. But each of these has one tile set that or one terraform set that's merging with the grass. It's it's set up to blend with the grass. Basically, it's the same for each of these. The the water also has its own slightly different has kind of like a little dirt edge to it, but each of these has one that's set with the neighboring tiles to the grass. They also have all these other ones set as neighboring tiles, and the reason being is that these are all wall tiles, and walls and floors can be neighbored with each other, and that's kind of hard to explain, but wherever there's a wall, I might have to switch to 3D to show this, but wherever you put down a wall tile, I want it to be one tile high, not two. It's going to touch ground tiles as well, and so you can see where the, the sand kind of wraps around it. It's easier to see from the top view, but you can see how it auto tiles and terraforms around the cube or the wall that we just placed. And that's why you want those set to terraform with your walls. If you're using walls, you want those to be in your neighboring tiles as well, so any ground tiles like the grass or water or whatever. So these are all set up to have a grass transition, so they will all have the same behaviors. You, you'll actually have to set up a different terraform for each terrain type that you want them to blend with, and it will start to pile up. And as I go, you'll see, you'll eventually see how many tile sets I end up with or how many layers. And it's almost this isn't a good example, but I have a, there's a lot of different terraforms set up for some of my graphics. In this case, this one's the base, is this flat desert type, and it terraforms with all these other ones. 
this is one that I'm, I'm just using as my reference, the way that I had some tiles set up. It's very helpful once you get something down. You might want to make a copy and use it as like a template later, but the roofs, that's the top of these. You can't see them from top down or tell that they're roofs, but they're actually one Z level higher than the ground. So the bottom here is Z level zero and up here is Z level one. And everything higher than that, it goes Z level one, two, three, four, five. And I, my map's not that tall. I think I have it set to four. Yeah, four, so it can only go up four times. And the way you do this is hold down control and roll your mouse wheel up or down and it will raise your tile up or down a layer and you can actually paint tiles on those layers higher up. Um, this is useful if you have you know a 3D level that's got multiple layers or multiple levels. I could paint over all of these tree tiles. It looks a little bit weird. There's some render issues there but from the top I don't want it to look like that but you can change the Z level. That's basically the in and out. If you're in top mode, up and down is X and Y, left and right is your, or up and down is your Y, left and right is your X. So just up and down, left, right, this is your traditional 2D axis. And then using your mouse wheel, that's the Z axis. That's in and out or up and down, I guess, on the Z axis. <coughs> I call it in and out because it's moving in and out of the screen. Especially if I'm in my top-down perspective, but that's helpful in top-down because you can go up and down through the layers, and I could paint over, but once you're in-game, it would all just look like garbage, <laughs> and that's not what I want. So there's another thing about the walls, and that's the, the roof tiles. Each of them has a specific setup for their terraforms, and the more you add, the more you're going to have to add more terraforms. But right now, you, you can see over here how the grass, when it touches a stone wall, the terraform here is this nice stone border. And then where the, the copper is intersecting with the stones, it's basically lining up with it or replacing it. And this setup, it's not super weird, but the first terraform I have is just set to ignore. And that's so, the stone, if, if you place a copper or a resource tile, one of these two neighboring tiles, if you place one of these next to the stone, it won't do anything. It'll just use its standard terraform, it won't do anything, it'll ignore it. It won't actually do this. This is just a preview of the terraform. It won't do this, but it, it won't it won't do anything when you paint them next to each other, but you also have to go into the other tile and do the same thing. It has to have a matching terraform. This is in case you put them inside the stone, but there's one for each. Um, basically, for when it's intersecting the inside areas, it does have to have a terraform for that so that the inside doesn't look weird. Uh, it's a little... I've still got a little bit of work to do. I want to try and see if I can blend the styles. Right now I want to ignore... If I did, if I have that set to absolute, it does this weird funky thing with the corners, um, and that's it's really not what I want it to do. Um, it'll still draw into it, and it looks good like that, but where it intersects on the edges, it just it does not. So that that's useful if I want to draw inside, but you can't have both. Um, that's just a small limitation, I believe, of 001. You can't do that kind of terraform. So I, I have it set to ignore. There's not going to be a smooth transition, but it, at least it lets me put them next to each other and into each other, and they don't do anything. So I can't get a, a nice smooth blend, but I can you know, I can put gems around the edge or stones around the edge and then remove them. That doesn't work because it's not a ground tile, but you can mine them out and get this effect pretty much. And back in here, all of these are kind of just set to 
absolute with no neighbors. And that's because the since these are roof tiles, these are one Z layer higher than the ground, as I was showing in the 3D perspective. Um, they're actually one layer higher than everything else. So there's no tiles next to them. And so if you don't have that uh, absolute or that ignore, uh, yeah, absolute tile set. If you don't have a set to absolute with no neighbors, this is this is what happens or what it should do if there is no tile next to it or if it doesn't know the tile next to it. Use this default terraform. So since it's one level higher, if I put it down on the ground, oops. <coughs> it's all kinds of wacky because there's no terraform set up for it to blend with any of these. It only terraforms itself, but if it's up on the second layer, or Z level one, I would say, I can show you really quickly. If we give it a neighboring tile, let's say it has to be touching this, this sand tile, it ends up looking blocky wherever there's no tiles next to it at all. And that's easily remedied by just setting up that simple terraform that, um, has no neighboring tiles if there's no if it doesn't have anything at all just do nothing just do your normal terraform so that's how to deal with walls that are or roofs that are terraforming on higher z layers and that's what i'm doing with those now i wish my last stream had worked i covered a good number of random things and i can't quite remember all the things that i had covered but um, most of it related to these layers and stuff and how to work with these terraforms. But I've, I've pretty much crammed all of that into the last 10 minutes. Since my previous video, I had to move a bunch of things around. I had to reset various terraforms and stuff. This time, I've actually got everything finished, so I can just jump in. And I actually made... Uh, this little frame here, I kind of want to edit it just a little bit. And I'm going to drag each of these squares, or each of these sections, in by one pixel. I want to give them a little black outline just to make them a little bit more defined when they're on the map. And grab that. The sprite editor that comes with 001 is actually really nice. Um, it's not super feature rich, there's not a lot of like tools there's no like spray brush or anything but it's good enough to do any kind of pixel art any quick interface work that you want to do most of the time I can finish everything in a matter of minutes seconds sometimes like quickly adding these outlines to these little indicator indicator brackets all right so what I'm kind of thinking I want to do is something where the mouse cursor will detect whether or not you're hovering over some ore and then display a little indicator. And there's a couple ways I can do that. I can actually do that with an actor on the map that moves around, or I can do it by spawning not even spawning, I can do it with a field on the interface. I might actually start with that just because it's, you know, like, I don't know, it's probably going to be more resource friendly just to have this positioned interface element. But if I want to do an actor on the, on the map, it might be quicker. So I might actually do both here. So if I want to do an actor tile frame, I've already set up a template here and it's already got the graphic set up for my tile selector frame. And when I first get on the map, I, I want to spawn that alongside the rover. So to do that, I currently just got this little shortcut, that uh, shouldn't be named dash cursor, but I've just got this little shortcut button right now. All it does is fling a few things into place and change the camera and whatnot. I just want it to, I think, 
because there's I've already got stuff set up to delete the rover when you leave the map. So well, I guess right now I'll just have it create the rover and the frame. It's going to create a tile frame pretty much where the rover is. And since it's a test, I, I usually put test stuff out to the side so I know what I'm doing. It's easier to see what I'm working on. And if I can click the right buttons, it's going to spawn one of those wherever the rover gets spawned on a map. And what I want that to do is position whenever the cursor is on top of a resource tile. I, don't, I keep forgetting what I want to call them. Resource tile, ore tile, crystal tile. There's probably going to be all of them, crystals and ore and whatnot, but they're going to be higher level. The, the first thing the player is going to be able to get is probably going to be stuff on the ground that they can pick up or small things that drop from dirt piles. But then later on you'll have like an upgraded laser that you can dig out these chunks with. So my my plan is to always have some kind of reason to come back to certain maps. You might want to come back and get some resources you missed, but it's not going to be like... I'm hoping not to do too many important things that you have to come back for, like key items or anything, but you can come back and re-harvest stuff. So I kind of want to do this thing. Delete all these, because I'm not going to be using any of those triggers. I don't want to use any physics, don't have any... Not, keep it from being solid, turn off all the speeds and whatnot, and decide what trigger I want to use. And this is probably going to be a win trigger because I don't want it to constantly reposition every frame. I want it to position once or during a condition that is only going to happen like when the, when the mouse moves over a tile that is a resource tile, it should position this little frame to that tile. So I kind of want to do a wind trigger. I think that's what I want to do. And I want it to be win tile set. And the reason is I want it to get tile set. I want to get the tile set of the currently selected tile. I don't want it to be any of these. What I want it to be is the rover, the currently spawned rover. So I needed to actually look up the word map, grab current map. And instead of any of those, I want to fill it in with my rover's scripting ID. So it would basically be actor rover.map. This is going to check the map the rover is currently on. I want to check the floor level, the floor layer, at Z layer 0. But instead of a specific value, it's going to check the targeted X of Z, Y of Z, or. Yeah, X of Z and Y of Z. So the, for the first one, it's going to be the targeted X of Z of Z layer zero. I'll explain these in just a second. I think I just closed my MS Paint and I had a good explanation of them. But basically what this is doing here, let me pull out Paint one more time. I did do a lot of stuff in my last video. I'm sorry it got messed up if anybody was watching, but thankfully I have no problem doing these again. Going over all this info is fun, actually. Um, so cursor target of Z, cursor target of Z, when you're looking at a map from top down you have a square, let's say you're looking at it from the side, kind of an angled view, normally you have your, your Y axis, and then you have your X axis, goes left to right. And the Y is up and down. So what this is doing is it's checking... First, I'd like to show the different layers, but it's checking the X position of the cursor or the Y position of the cursor on the current Z layer. And what that means is when you are working on a map, you... Oops, I want it to be black. You sometimes put things on a higher layer, the Z layer. And this would be considered Z layer 0, Z layer 1 and Z layer 2, and so forth until you, you know, you get all the way up to the height of your map size. And these are 32 pixels apart. Ooh. Okay. Basically the same thing if we, oops, if 
we were to do multiple Z layers over here as well. Um, this very bottom one would be Z layer 0, this is Z layer 1, and this is Z layer 2. But each of those has their own X and Y. So the X, oops, I want a line, I'm bad at this. The X of Z layer 1 would be 32 pixels higher and it would be in the middle diamond, and so forth. The X of Z layer 3 would be 32 pixels higher than that. It would be way up here. It's the same for the Y values as you get higher on the Z layer. Ahoy! Not too shabby. Let me pause my stream.
duty calls. Okay. <coughs> Accidentally made that one green. But yeah, that basically, cursor target X is going to be the left and right of the red line here. And of Z0 is what it's looking at. It's, this is Z0, this bottom Z layer. Z1 is 32 pixels higher, Z2 is 32 pixels higher than that, 64 pixels higher than the ground, etc, 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 until it reaches the top of your map size. So that's what I want to do, is to get the tile set of the cursor that the player is currently hovering over. But I want that tile set to be equal to resources. Only when the cursor is hovering over resources. So I can come back into my cursor click button here. Don't really need this one here anymore. I want to actually move that into my trigger. So I'm going to scooch this over here. Go back to my actor template for the tile frame. Plop this in here. And if I if I set it all up correctly, it won't explode on me. It'll actually throw a little log message in the corner that says a mineable resource. Let's see what happens. Scanning. Ooh, that's a bit loud. Entering planetary orbit. So once you get down on the planet, you see that it spawns on top of me. Now, what did I do? I broke something. Probably broke something because I put them in the same position. Even though that shouldn't be the case. It's also blinking and being weird for some reason. So, <laughs> I don't want it to be in the same position as the rover, I don't believe. Well, go in here, change my weird little testing thingy, and we'll put it right above where the rover goes. It shouldn't have a collision. It shouldn't have any issue with where the rover is. Scanning. All right. Entering planetary orbit. What did I do here? I broke my rover. Somehow. All by adding that one little piece. So, to fix this little buggy, I want to reconnect my original script and pull that out of there. Figure out what is actually happening bit by bit. Turbo everything as usual. All right. So, no issues with the rover. Let's go take a look at that spawning event. I named it Rover on accident because I am a Dumbo. I want to change a couple things here too. I want to change that. So it's actually going to put it on the map that the rover is on. Setting that to rover. And then I'm going to just set it to the rover's position again. Actor rover dot x. Actor rover dot y. Leave everything else the way it is. And we'll reconnect that here. 
So it should work. It shouldn't freak out. Now the cursor is just on top of the rover. It's going to sit there. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to be totally visible forever. That's happening because I have moved my mouse cursor off of the map. And that's very not great. And all I need to do is add a condition in there to make sure that I'm hovering over a map at all. Well, that's a little fun one. I think I can put that in here. <clears throat> I'm going to grab this and cut it. Include all. And if I go all the way down to the bottom, there's this little section called structure here. And the one that I want to use is condition. This allows me to use the same condition branch, effectively the same thing that you'd find in the, the scripting editor, only as a single line of text. So. What I want to do here is see if the targeted map is not nothing. And remember, two quotes means nothing. It doesn't mean a space, it doesn't mean zero, it just means blank. So if the targeted map is not nothing, check this here. Check the rovers, or the, the cursors, not the rovers, check the cursors current position on the rovers map. And if false, I gotta think of what it should return here, but it shouldn't return anything, I don't think. That is a very unpleasant feeling on my hand. Scraped it across the desk. I imagine I'm going to get an error for this one as well. I haven't used the structure condition in a while, but in this case it's going to return a zero if there's nothing there, which I hope works. Normally the triggers function by activating with a one or a zero, so if the condition is a zero, then it won't do anything, and if the condition is a 1, then it will trigger. So I'm hoping that I did that correctly. Pretty sure. Scanning. Entering planetary orbit. ta -da. So it's also doing it anyways. I gotta figure out something else for that. Because the cursor is out of bounds of the map. So my trigger will not work correctly. I'm going to try one more thing. See if the targeted map is currently equal to the rover's current map. That's a funky one I might have to mess with a little bit. Let's just try... and 
see if I can eliminate that error with a few things. descriptions that my workflow can be a little bit chaotic. Sometimes I jump around between things and sometimes I break stuff a lot. So at least right now it knows that I'm targeting the map. It's given me a condition of yes whenever it's targeting the map, which is what I want. Now that's one condition that I, I can use for when it's currently targeting the map it'll trigger this trigger here. But that's not quite what I want it to do. Um, I want it to check the tile set that the cursor is over, but if it's not over anything, then it's going to fire an error. So the problem is my original condition is trying to check the cursor target Z position, but if it's not pointed at a map, this can't get anything it doesn't have anything to check it actually errors because the condition here the triggers trying to check that but there's no map to check so it's really tough thinking it out in my head um, I'm gonna try it with those two conditions I don't think that's gonna work but I have discovered sometimes combining my random conditions does what I want them to do and sometimes it's totally unexpected when I think I'm about to break something and I don't, but it's probably going to break because I'm not on the map. But as soon as I am, it works. That's unfortunate. think how I want to do this. One way I can set up a use value let's say I call it target tile turns the currently current and we're going to click this function tick box here, displayed in use value window, because we want it to be a use value. None of these, we don't need any parameters or anything. I want it to return a 1 or a 0, basically, so I'm going to create my returns first. 1 and a 0. And the conditions that it'll check are going to be similar to what I was using. I believe I want to check whether it's highlighting the same map that the rover is on, or highlighting any map at all. So, first thing I need to do, I forgot I've never set up my quick events. So I want a condition branch, first and foremost. I Really, there's, there's two that work ex almost exactly the same. The condition branch and the comparison branch are similar. The comparison branch lets you pick the the operator and set the values here and there but in the, you can you can actually set up the same things in a condition branch like one is greater than three or value is greater than other value 
and all it's going to do is, re you know, it'll take the left path if the condition is true, and it'll take the right path if it's false. It's the same case with the the con comparison branch. I, I just I like to use the condition branch. I don't know why. There sometimes I do use comparison branches, but I usually use these condition branches. I don't think there's any real advantage to it, but I like them. They're simpler. They're smaller. And what I want to do first is check to make sure that there is a targeted map. Targeted map is not zero, or not nothing. Targeted map is not nothing. And if it is, continue. If it is nothing, return nothing. And then cursor target map. We want to change this one to I forget what my second condition was. Oh yes, the same map as the rover. Target map is equal to actor rover dot map. If it's the same map that the rover's on, because there are several maps that the cursor could be targeting. Could be targeting the, the 3D orbiting camera view. But we want to make sure it's targeting the same map that the rover's on might actually have to add another condition in there at some point, but that's all I'm going to put for now as far as where it is. And then what we want to do is check to see if the tile set that is at our cursor dot target x of z zero and target y of z0 of the floor layer on the map that the rover is on so actor rover dot map is equal to resources oops if it's not it's a zero and if it is it's a one so that'll give me this one zero binary switch here. I just want to change that to my new custom use value target tile. And put my mineable resource found log back in there. Right now you see it doesn't fire any errors when I'm off the map. And when I move my mouse over the oars, we see mineable resource found. Mineable resource found. Now the problem at the moment is it doesn't re-trigger each time I move onto the same tile. So it's, it's not checking if it's already the same. So that won't really work. It'll only work if I'm moving off of another tile onto it. So I gotta figure something else out for that. But the first thing I want that to do is position that little cursor uh, to that tile. along with that. So we want to use a position actor, position this actor on the map that the rover is on. We want to position it to the tile that we're checking, which is tough because we want to move it to where the cursor is, but divided by a 32 pixel increments, so it's going to have to be cursor dot target oops x of z0 and cursor 
dot target y of z is zero. Now, the math for that, I'm probably incorrect on. Uh, you have to divide it by 32 and add an offset, I believe, uh, to get it to position to the to the correct spot. I'm just going to try that right now. I think I've got that script set up in another project, and I can Scanning. jump in there and reference that really quick. And Remember, I am absolutely garbage at math, and I do not have many skills when it comes to trigonometry and algebra. And so what that's doing, since it's getting divided by 32, I think it's sticking it way up there in the corner where I can't get to. Unfortunately, I can if I put on my other rover controls where I can jump. And it's putting it all the way up in the top corner because this position divided by 32 is a really teensy tiny number. And so you want to do the position times 32 divided by 32. Blah, blah, blah. I have this set up here in my isometric crafting project, which it's very old at this point, but there's also a cursor that moves around on the map. And it moves around based on a 32 pixel increment, which would be times 32 plus 16, times 32 plus 16, times 32 plus 16. think about my math here because that's incorrect. I think what I was doing was a custom position use value here. Oh yeah. Forward slash divided by 32. So I'm just gonna Save that cursor. Do 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 do. Or backslash, not forward slash. Um, thirty-two. I believe we multiply that by thirty-two because I have to get the tile position, which double one's grid is based on thirty-two pixel increments. So. My map size is 50, but it's actually something closer to several thousand pixels instead of 50 pixels. So, go back to my little tile guy here, tile frame. And this is going to be backslash. times 32 plus offset of 16 which is half the tile size I, I'm, I could be doing this wrong I could be doing this unnecessarily I don't remember If all goes accordingly, it should move it right to the, the tile position. Scanning. Entering planetary orbit. No guarantees, but... Guarantees. I know what I'm doing. So that's what I want it to do. I want it to move this little cursor to these tiles when you can mine them. However, moving around on here doesn't work. Um, that's because it's a win trigger and it's checking the same. These are all the same, so it's already returning a one. And 
the the use value only returns a one because it's constantly on a tile that's a resources tile set. So I might not want that to be a win trigger. There is a trigger for mouse um, touch move, which only works if you're moving the cursor over this sprite. There's a timer, which I don't really want to use. And I'm not really certain if I've got an option here other than to change the use value into a condition for my trigger here. So I'm thinking I can't use most of these I can't use. can include a condition to make it loop itself over and over if it returns a one, but then that would fire the wind trigger over and over. Let's see. I'm going to try something really stupid. I actually can't. Um... This probably isn't going to work, but I'm going to try it because who knows. Oops. Not 10, you doofus. Zero. Just connect all these here. And connect that there. Get rid of that. And set it to persistent just in case I'm doing this wrong. If condition is equal to one, turn into a zero. This is probably going to break things. It's probably going to make my script run really weird, really weird. I don't know. We'll find out. I just want it to be able to check over and over if the mouse is still hovering over a resource tile. It should be checking over and over and over. But I don't know if I'm doing that right. And I did. So that works exactly how I wanted. It's going to give me a thousand uh, log messages <laughs> because it's actually resetting itself over and 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 over. I don't know if that's great for my performance. I actually didn't check. If only I could rewind what I'm doing right now. I'll have to watch it in the video later. So this might be the last little thing I do for this particular video. I just wanted to get that particular behavior in. So it's... no performance is staying exactly the same, just moves it around. The only thing I have to do next is make it turn on and off whenever I'm not hovering over one of these resource tiles. And this should work with any of them. If it's a resource tile, 
I can highlight any of these. Now, the tough part's going to be making it so if I'm hovering over a tile that's currently surrounded, like these two tiles, I shouldn't be able to highlight any tiles that are surrounded by others. They should be accessible to the player, so that might be something I work on for the next video, but for now, I think that's probably enough. Um, if you haven't checked out ScreamingBrainStudios.com, go there. Get some free stuff. There's a whole bunch of free downloads. Everything's public domain. Uh, there's textures and tile sets and cards and dominoes. There's also a bunch of free tools that you can get for free. There's a whole bunch of tutorials that you can get for free. And I guess that's about it. Until next time, thanks for watching.